Hey guys, what's up? Alex Perry here, and I hope you're having a fantastic day as always. Today, I'm bringing you another tutorial. I'm gonna show you how to do this really cool double exposure effect in Adobe Premiere Pro. Check it out. Let's get to it. All right, so before we get started, you're gonna need five things. You're gonna need a camera, a tripod, a blank wall, preferably white if possible, yourself, and a light source. So first things first, you're gonna to wanna to set your camera up on a tripod and place it in front of the blank wall. Next, set up your light source. Now, this could be an actual external light or it could even be light coming from the window. Just make sure that the light is coming from a bit of an angle so that it's not directly face on directly in front of you. Make sure it's a little bit off to the front side if possible. This will create a bit of contrast and allow some shadows to be cast, which will be important for the steps we'll be doing later on. Then, you can stand right in front of the wall between the wall and the camera and just start recording. So just film yourself doing anything. I like the whole moody, cool things. I think it looks really cool, this whole double exposure look. So I put on my leather jacket, I put on my glasses, tried to look all like moody and brooding, because I really think that helps with this kind of footage. But you can do absolutely anything you want. So get creative with it, film something cool. Then once you've imported all your footage onto your computer, you're gonna wanna import it into Adobe Premiere Pro. After you place your clip in your timeline like so, you're gonna have to find another piece of footage that you wanna put on top of the clip of yourself because this will act as the double exposure. So for my clip, I just decided to find a shot that I took of the city of Toronto downtown, a view I shot from the CN Tower. So as you can see, the footage is rotated sideways. So I had to scale it and rotate it to fit in my timeline as I wanted to. I think I need to mute my watch. Anyway, so once I put this footage of the city shot in my timeline on top of the shot of myself, I just had to rotate it and scale it so that it would fit appropriately in my scene. Now, the key here is you want whatever it is that's gonna be part of the double exposure to fit nicely within the bounds of your body because that's essentially where the double exposure will be showing. Um, it won't be showing on the white background area. So you wanna make sure that there's enough width to this second shot to cover the width of your body. So as you can see, I've made sure it's quite a bit bigger than the width of my body in that shot because I do happen to move around quite a bit in this footage here, but use your own discretion to see how you should be scaling and fitting your secondary shot in your timeline. Then next, we're gonna just go over here and click on this eye icon so that we can hide this city footage or the secondary shot that you're gonna be putting in your timeline. This will allow us to just fully see our primary shot that we wanna work with first. So we do have to do a couple things to this footage before we apply the double exposure effect. We're gonna to wanna to create an adjustment layer by right clicking in the empty space here, going new item and adjustment layer. Hit okay and then drag that above your first primary clip in between the first clip and the secondary double exposure shot. Make sure the adjustment layer is highlighted and then you can start making some adjustments there. So you wanna make sure that your baseline footage is very contrasty because this will really help pick up all the details for the double exposure effect. So I'm gonna go in and increase the brightness. So as you'll notice over here, the white wall, which looks kind of gray because of the lighting I had and the exposure I had, it's becoming a lot more white now. But everything is becoming brighter, obviously, since I'm adjusting the overall exposure. So we're gonna go in and adjust the contrast as well. So we're gonna drag that up, so it's making it quite contrasty. We can even play around with the shadows, so we can bring down the shadows, so that deepens the blacks. So essentially you wanna deepen and darken your blacks, your shadows, and you wanna whiten and brighten all your whites. You could even drag up the white slider over here as well. So that's making the white background as white as possible. And lastly, you can even drop the blacks just a touch to create even more of a contrast to your shot. So I think that looks pretty good so far. 
Now, you could do this in color, but I do find this double exposure effect does work particularly well when it is in black and white. So what I typically do is I go down to the saturation settings under the main basic correction from the elementary color panel, and I just drag that saturation right down. Now, sometimes I like to leave a little bit of color in there and just play around with it and see what happens. But for right now, I think we're gonna go all the way down to black and white. So now when you go and play back your footage, it's like a super high contrast, black and white, cool looking shot. I'm actually going to just try to deepen those shadows even more. So I'm gonna bring the shadows all the way down. There, I think that should work better. Okay, okay, so next we're gonna go back to our secondary footage that we put above everything else. And we're gonna go back to this little eye icon and click it again to turn that layer back on. So before we go any further, I do like to make some color corrections or even color grading to this footage as well. Because um, this will be kind of like your overall finished look that will be showing through in the double exposure. So make this footage look however you like. So I'm just gonna go ahead and use a LUT that I've created. So I'm gonna use my Ada Priority LUT. So that just gives it a bit of a certain look to it. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just bring those blacks right down again. So you want a little bit of a contrast to this as well, but you don't want add like the same level of extreme contrast that you apply to your first footage of yourself. Then we're gonna go up to the effects control, scroll on down to where it says opacity and blend mode. It should be on normal by default. So you're gonna click on that and set it to lighten. So this essentially got rid of that video footage anywhere it is very light or white. So as you can see in all the dark areas, you can see the footage behind it. So if I scrub through this now and play it back, you're gonna see that secondary footage all within the dark areas of my footage. That's why you want this, the contrast to be as high as possible without making it look too crushed, too crazy. But having that high contrast and like super white whites and darker darks is what really helps this effect look good. So once again, the key is to have very white whites to see in the background. We got rid of pretty much all of, of the secondary footage in the white background area and the darker darks in the shadows here allows you to see that footage. This is why I said to shoot with some kind of contrasty light as well. So instead of having the light directly in front of you, we put it off to the side. So as you can see over here, my face is lit up and this side of my body is lit up as well. So you're seeing less of that secondary footage in this side of my face and body. So you can still see me, you can still see my features, but then you have the shadow half of myself as well, which is where you can really start seeing the double exposure effect. So let's play that back. Let's try that again without my computer lagging, hopefully. There we go. So as you can see, it's got this really cool double exposure effect happening right here. And there you have it. That's how you do a pretty cool, simple, easy double exposure effect in Adobe Premiere Pro. I hope you like this effect. Uh, I would love to see what you guys create using this tutorial and using this effect. So hit me up on Instagram and send me some samples of what you've done. I always love seeing what you guys create with tutorials that I put out there. So please let me know what you've been working on. If you found this tutorial useful, please hit that like button, leave us a comment down below letting us know what you thought, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button. If you hit that little bell notification icon beside the subscribe button, you'll get notified every single time we drop new videos just like this one. There's a lot more cool stuff coming your way, so stay tuned. As always, keep creating guys. Peace out.